Hi guys, this is Gary from G&J Reptiles. Uh, and first and foremost, I just want to say thank you very much for liking our page and uh, following us through this journey. Um, I've gotten a lot of feedback from some people saying that they were interested in learning how to set up dubia roaches, breeding them, sexing them, etc., etc. So we're just going to put together a short video for you guys. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. All right, guys. So first off, this is a female adult dubia roach. You can tell by the wings on the back, they only run about a third of the way down her body. That's how you can tell that that one's a female. In my other hand here, this is a male. He has full length wings that go all the way down the back. Now when I put the two together, you can see that they're definitely different. Easy to determine which is which. Alright, so now moving on to the containers and uh, the setup and everything to get these guys up and roaring. Um, basically what you're going to start off with is uh, a sterile container. The one that I use is a 30 gallon container. You can find them at Walmart or any other big chain store. They usually sell for like 10 to $15 depending on what size you get. Um, I like these ones in particular because the bottom is square, not rounded, and it just makes it so the egg crate fits a little bit better inside. All right, the next thing that you're gonna need is uh, a bunch of egg crates, some pieces of cardboard. I'm gonna grab those now and show you. Any pieces of cardboard will do. These are just going to be used as spacers for the egg crate, just to give a little gap in between so the roaches have places to climb up and not hide. Uh, another thing that you're going to want is a food dish with food in it. I know this looks really full. Uh, one of the things that I'll tell you is when I'm setting up this bin in particular for this video, I'm going to show you how to put the males and females in there and then you can go from there. I already have a bunch of colonies, so I'm actually um, breaking down one of my other colonies that has gotten too large and transferring it into this bin. Um, one other thing that I'll touch on real quick, you can go and buy water crystals um, online on Amazon, reptile distributors, pet stores, but what I found out was these water storing crystals that you can buy at Walmart for $5 is the exact same setup, same makeup is what you would buy at a reptile store for four times the price. <clears throat> so what I ended up doing was I did some research, I looked it up, there's nothing in here that's toxic or anything like that. I've tried this multiple times on my roaches and other feeder insects without any issues whatsoever. They're water storing crystals, all they are are polymer water crystals and uh, if you look it up they're completely inert, like I said. You add water to them, they swell up just like your regular water gel will and you can put that in there as a, as a moisture substance for them. All right, and uh, we're gonna move on now and I'll show you how to set the tank. All right guys, now we're gonna move on to the fun part. This is setting the bin up for the roaches. Um, first thing that you're gonna have to do is just take some of the egg crate that you got and line it in here vertically. The reason why we put it in vertically is so that any droppings from the roaches fall down to the bottom of the bin and it makes it a lot easier to clean when you get to that point. Um, a little side note, I clean my bins probably once every three to four months and um, they're totally fine like that it's as long as you put the egg crate in vertically. All right, so basically you start off with one piece of egg crate, piece of cardboard, piece of egg crate, piece of cardboard, another piece of egg crate, piece of cardboard. So I think you guys get the picture at this point. I'm going to finish setting this side up and we'll start the video back up so you can see the finished product. All right guys, we're back and we got the egg crate set up. Like I said, uh, cardboard spacers in between. That just leaves some gaps uh, in the egg crate to give the roaches room to walk around, move around, and also it'll help get airflow through um, because the last thing you want is any type of moisture in there for a long period of time because it can create mold and wipe out your entire colony. We'll talk, we'll touch on that again in a few minutes. Next what I'm going to show you is uh, just the food dishes. Food dish is going to go in. This is my own blend of uh, ingredients that I put together for my roaches. Seems to work really well. They'll hammer on this stuff uh, basically as soon as I put it in their uh, enclosures. Um, one of the things that's nice about making it yourself is it's a lot cheaper than buying it from the store or buying it online. 
So that's going to go in on one side. Then I've got the water crystals here. This is the finished product after you add water to the polymer water crystals. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but basically it just turns into a gel. You can see it right there on my finger. These guys will come up and eat it, and uh, that'll give them plenty of moisture to keep them going. Um, one of the other things that I will say about this stuff that uh, you have to maintain this. You will have to add water to this every so often to kind of fluff it back up, um, but you won't. You would not believe how much this, how much water this will take on. This will take on an enormous amount of water, and they can still walk right over the top of it. So this will last for a couple days at a time without having to continually get in and disturb the roaches. So I'm going to set this down on the other side. And uh, now we're pretty much ready to add the adults in. At this point, um, what we like to do is we usually do a 1 to 4 ratio. That means 1 male for every 4 females that you put in. The reason why we do that is if you have too many males in there, they'll actually compete to try to breed. It'll stress out the females and it just it wreaks havoc on your colony. So you want to keep your colonies relatively small, relatively speaking for roaches. Um, we have probably somewhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred per bin, thirty gallon bin, just to give you an idea. But that's a whole assortment of nymphs of every size and also adults. Um, one of my big established colonies that I have over there, I have roughly about 160 females or so and then the appropriate number of males because I'm not going to sit here and do the math for it but basically like I said it's a one to four ratio one male for every four females so we're going to go ahead and put these guys in they're going to get comfortable and then we're going to come back in just a minute after I put the rest of my colony in here and we'll show you what else these guys uh, can do all right All right guys, so now we're back. We got about 600 or so uh, nymphs that I just tossed in here also, along with the adults that you saw me pour in earlier. Um, one of the things I forgot to say earlier in the video is the reason why we set the bins up the way we do is this side here with the egg crate. Um, obviously you can see those guys are already climbed in there and starting to nestle in. Um, we set it up this way, so this is their housing more or less. So this is where you're gonna wanna run a heat pad. Um, the type of heat pads that we use for our uh, colonies are these uh, from they're from reptile basics and it's an ultra therm heat pad uh, basically all this does is uh, it heats it up just a, just about 85 to 90 degrees which is optimal for the roaches okay um, this doesn't require a thermostat you can just basically plug it in and go um, I would advise to actually you know check the temperature from time to time just to make sure that it's where it needs to be but I've never had an issue with these failing whatsoever um, moving on, obviously on the other side, you got your food dish and you have the polymer water crystals for them to drink from. You can see already that they're eating the food, um, walking around on the, on the food containers and also on the water crystals. Um, so this is their basic setup and uh, like I said, from here, this population will grow to about a thousand within a couple months. Um, I already have females in there that I'm sure are going to be having babies soon. Um, just to clarify something also. I don't know all the scientific terms for it, but these guys do not lay eggs. They live birth. Um, I believe their gestation period is about 30 days or so. Um, once that gestation period ends, they have their babies and they come out live. Um, they actually hold their eggs inside for that time frame. And um, when they come out, they're ready to go, ready to eat. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, just to wrap this video up real quick, um, this is one of my actual breeder bins that uh, has been established for a little while. One thing that I can uh, show you in here real quick is I run tape around the, the top of the, the bin. Basically, the whole reason that I do that is just it's an extra slick sur surface to stop them from being able to climb out. Some people use uh, lids, but I like mine to be open to the air uh, that way. The humidity in there doesn't get too high because if you get any type of mold or bacteria in there, it can wipe out the whole colony. Um, another thing that I was going to talk about real quick as far as tips go is uh, oranges. 
A lot of people feed oranges. You don't want to use too many of them because you, the citrus content that's in oranges can actually be harmful to some of the, the lizards that you feed these guys off to. Um, I usually do one to two a week. Uh, the reason why we do it is because it'll actually speed up the reproductive process. I don't know if that's 100% true, but that's what I've been told, and it seems to be working pretty well with all mine. Never had any adverse effects with my dragons or anything like that. Um, another thing I don't know if I mentioned earlier in the video is uh, scraps from our greens uh, for our dragons. Collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, stalks, all that type of stuff we put down in the bin and uh, we make sure those guys get basically gut loaded with that um, as well as the, uh, the food that I prepare for them myself. Uh, we put potatoes in there once in a while also for moisture and uh, yeah. So these guys have a pretty well-balanced diet, and the better diet that you give your roaches, the better diet is going to translate over to your lizards. Um, real quick, I just want to say thank you again for everybody watching this video. Um, please like it, share it, um, any comments that you have or anything like that, we'd be happy to hear from you. Any questions or anything that I missed, just let us know down in the comments below, and uh, we'll try to get to you as quickly as possible. Again, thank you for everything that you guys are doing. We really appreciate the support. Talk to you soon.